it's that feeling that makes you want it. So finally, ZBrush is having a new user interface, and this was teased at the just concluded ZBrush Summit 2025. And as we all know, ZBrush is the industry standard when it comes to digital sculpting, and for more than two decades, ZBrush desktop user interface has been both its power and also its barrier for new users. As a tool, it offers an unmatched sculpting toolset which is wrapped in a dense, unconventional user interface that artists would either master or struggle through while getting the most simplest task done inside of ZBrush. But with ZBrush moved to iPad, everything seems to have changed, as when the folks at Magzone announced the release of ZBrush for iPad, they did reimagine the whole user interface and shrink the user interface to fit into the form factor of a tablet, which allowed for larger controls, cleaner UIs, and also a nice context-aware panel which has turned ZBrush into something more close to a modern creative app. I mean, take a look at this user interface and also take a look at this other user interface. You possibly would go for the iPad version compared to the desktop version because it's cleaner, it's easier to understand, and you don't have all those clunky menus that you find on every menu sub-menu that exists for the desktop. And with reception of ZBrush for iPad, the folks at Magzone started wise to redesign the user interface for the desktop. Paul Gabri, the current Magzone 3D product development manager, has described this redesign of the desktop version as one of their biggest projects ever for ZBrush, as this has already been in development for over a year now. And this implementation marks the very first time that we were seeing ZBrush user interface and user experience direction have a dramatic shift from what it usually is. And I think this is going to bring a lot of people to start appreciating this tool and possibly lower the barrier for those who like to use ZBrush to get started with it. And this is very similar to what we saw that happened with Blender. We all know that Blender was a wonderful tool to work with, but the learning curve was pretty steep and a lot of people just didn't understand it. I mean, take a look at this user interface. It sort of looks like when your computer is trying to go through a not respondent phase where the whole user interface has a white overlay and you just have to wait for the program to respond or possibly shut down and you know the funny thing with this is even if you go over to like the user preference and then you go right here and possibly say for example you like to change the theme you don't really have good themes best themes you're going to have is the one from ubuntu ambulance which seems to be like the staple theme that a lot of creators use even at that, understanding how to work around Blender was a big deal. So for example, you like to select this, you have to right click to actually select that. And if you like to select this, you have to right click. Things were just a little bit, you know, here and there. But then with 2.8, it became totally different. There was a lot of acceptance. Blender became more approachable without losing depth. A lot of people understood how this tool really worked. Most of the menus that were hidden was now a bit more visible. And then the overall user experience is even better. And speaking about user interface acceptance and similarities, Unreal Engine shares from that as well. Like in this case, you can see what we have with the previous versions of Unreal Engine, which is the 4 series. It sort of looks very old and non-modern, especially with the color team and all that. But with the new version, you can see that things are looking even cleaner. And for those that like the previous layout, you can also go ahead and change that by simply going over to Window, go all the way here, and you can load up the 4 series classic layouts. Now with the modern user interface coming to ZBrush, this would reduce the friction that newcomers would face when exploring ZBrush. Importantly, the user interface would pretty much be one-to-one -one when you shift from ZBrush for desktop and start working with ZBrush for iPad. Making the ecosystem pretty similar and how you work with ZBrush would now be a matter of device. And comparably, this is the same thing that we're seeing with Nomad Sculpt, as Nomad Sculpt became pretty popular because it demonstrated an elegant, lightweight, and modern mobile sculpting interface and experience. And we've also seen that Nomad Sculpt is making a desktop shift as well, as they're trying to bring Nomad Sculpt to desktop users based on their mobile version success. And you can also see that the user interface for both the desktop version, the web version, and also the mobile version seems to be one-to-one. -one. Now, one can argue if the folks at Magzone seems to be taking samples from the folks at Nomad or if this is something they're already planning prior to the folks at Nomad Scope making their announcement. But for what it is, ZBrush Desktop will be entering a new era with the new and redesigned interface. Of course, this might also come with modes where you can switch from one mode to another to get things done. I would want to think that that might be pretty easy to implement owing to the fact that in ZBrush at this point, you can toggle through different user interface, different color themes, and you know, you can also store your own user preference and reuse that however you want. And yes, a lot of creators would still want to work with ZBrush as it is.
owing to the fact that they've been using these for a very long time now and muscle memory and old habits might definitely kick in. One thing I'll suggest that the folks at Maxon do is to keep the shortcuts the exact way that they are and possibly create more rooms for artists to have more creative freedom to customize ZBrush. But until we get a concrete sneak peek of how this works, we can only speculate and hope they do something pretty cool that a lot of creators would love. And speaking about things that are pretty cool that a lot of creators would love, during the ZBrush Summit, they did tease out a few things, and one of them has to do with ZBrush to Substance Link. And this just makes it so much easier for you to now send your stuff from ZBrush to Substance, do your designs there and bring it back. Of course, we've seen this with ZBrush for Photoshop, ZBrush for tools like, you know, Character Creator and all that stuff. But it makes sense to see that there is a wonderful handshake going on with ZBrush and Substance. At the same time, the folks at ZBrush also teased their new unwrapping tool. And of course, there's also a couple of teases here and there that has to do with their new retopology tool as well. And all of these are nice, cool stuff. And I would like to know what you guys think about this one in the comment section. So this is it. The folks at Maxon are unifying the user interface for ZBrush for iPad and also ZBrush for desktop. And things seems to be looking pretty cool. And with Nomad Scott entering the desktop race, let's see how things measures up in the coming years. Now, when this is going to be fully implemented is something we have little to no idea about, but I can sort of guess that maybe within the next major update, we might be getting this. Possibly ZBrush 2026.5 or maybe ZBrush 2027 or potentially ZBrush 2028. So this is it. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.